So apparently protein powders contain lead, like a lot, especially plant-based ones. Well, at least that's what the headlines are saying that are making the rounds right now. Sounds really scary, right? But before you throw out your protein powder, let's actually look at what this article says and why I'm not freaking out. I'm Derek from Simnet Nutrition. I'm a holistic nutritionist. I'm a plant-based lifter who just loves to help inspire people to take control of their health. So I'm sure many of you saw the article, or at least the headlines. Consumer Reports tested 23 different protein powders for heavy metals. Some of the protein powders were plant-based, some were not. And they found that about 70% of them had more lead than what their food experts deem is safe. And the plant-based ones were the worst offenders. This is not good. I consume plant-based protein powder. You guys know I love my post-workout smoothies more than anything. I've been having them for years. So right away I wondered, what is their limit? Well, apparently it's 0.5 micrograms of lead per serving. So where did they get this number from? Well, that number comes from California's Proposition 65. Not from the FDA, not from the NSF, not from the Canadian health authorities or the European health authorities. Prop 65 is a California law that requires warning labels if a product could expose you to a very small amount of some 900 plus chemicals, including lead. But here's the thing, those levels are extremely conservative. I mean, I'm sure you've seen those Prop 65 labels on like most things that you buy. For comparison, the FDA allows eight to 12 micrograms of lead per day for adults. So a scoop of protein powder with, say, two micrograms will trigger a Prop 65 warning label, but it's still well below what's considered unsafe by the international standard. So for reference, a carrot contains two micrograms of lead. Yes, two. That's 400% of what Consumer Reports says is safe. So where are the headlines about all the lead in carrots? I don't know, I didn't see them. <laughs> Obviously less lead is always better, but I feel like some of the wording in this article is a little bit misleading, which has caused a lot of sensationalized headlines and a lot of people are worried. So I know this because many of you DM'd me about it and I was worried myself when I first saw these headlines. So if we look at the product that had the highest lead levels, it's a mass gainer and one serving is six scoops or 315 grams. So first of all, that's a ton of product. And the report said that it contains 1,572% of their level of concern for lead, which sounds absolutely nuts. But if you calculate that out, that's actually 7.7 .7 micrograms, which is not only under the FDA's limit, but also under the NSF, Health Canada's limit. Since I'm Canadian, during my research for this video, I actually saw that Health Canada responded to this whole thing. And they said that protein powders sold here in Canada are subject to our food and drug regulations and that the lead levels found in the report do not pose a health risk to adults when used as directed. So again, context matters. And it's great that Consumer Reports tested this, but the way that their story spread online missed a lot of important nuance. So why is there lead in plant protein anyway? So it's not because companies are putting it in there or it's from the processing or anything like that. It's because plants absorb minerals and metals that are naturally found in the ground and in the soil that they grow in and in the water. And when you take peas and rice and hemp and you concentrate them into a powder, you're actually concentrating everything that they've absorbed, not just the protein. That includes trace minerals and heavy metals and all sorts of things. This usually isn't a concern for most people, but pregnant women, fetuses, infants, and young children are the most sensitive to lead exposure. So if you're pregnant or giving protein powder to kids, you'll want to be extremely careful and choose very clean brands that are verified, third-party tested, or just skip it altogether. And this is why third-party testing is so important. When a company uses third-party labs, it means that every batch is independently tested, so you know what you're getting. So I really didn't want this video to seem like an ad, but this is exactly why I use Veg Organic Plant Protein. It's tested for heavy metals, pesticides, and herbicides, also for purity. Try the new flavor, cookies and cream with real organic cookie chunks. Link and discount code in the description box down below. <laughs> no, but seriously, if you are gonna consume protein powder consistently, or any supplements for that matter, you want to make sure that it's the best quality and that they are third-party tested. The last batch of Veg's vanilla protein contained just 0.79 micrograms of lead per serving. That is incredibly low. And if we compare that to carrots, that's less than half of the amount of lead that you would find in a single carrot. I'm really cautious about what I consume and what I put into my body, and I would not promote a company or use a product I didn't trust and use myself. But no matter what supplements you're using, you definitely want to make sure that they are third-party testing. And if it's not obvious on their label or on the website, definitely reach out to them and ask because they should be proud to let you know. Completely avoiding lead is impossible. It's in our soil, it's in the air, it's even in the water that we drink sometimes. But here's some good news. There's certain foods that we can actually eat that help block lead absorption. Fiber from fruits and vegetables can bind to lead in your digestive tract and inhibit it from being absorbed. In contrast, lead or heavy metals in water are almost entirely absorbed since there is no fiber to help block
block the absorption. There's actually a great article on this from nutritionfacts.org, which I'll link below if you want to dig deeper. Interestingly enough, it also mentions that milk increases lead absorption and certain nutrients in soy can actually reduce it. Pretty cool. So as I always say and recommend, make sure to eat a colorful, nutrient-rich diet based around whole plant-based foods. While protein powders can contain trace amounts of lead, it doesn't mean that they are dangerous, but you should always choose brands that are third-party tested and that are reliable. So you obviously don't need to consume protein powder in order to be healthy, to build muscle, although it can definitely help to bump up your protein amounts to help you build more muscle. But fear-based headlines, this is what doesn't help anyone. What helps is education and understanding. So if you found this video helpful, if you learned something from it, definitely hit the like button, subscribe for more, and I will see you soon in another video. Bye-bye. If you wanna make your healthy meals taste even better, check out my latest recipe ebook, Easy Vegan Dressings and Sauces. There's 35 amazing oil-free recipes in there that are sure to transform any meal. There's a link in the description box down below.